there are three ways that we can write a linear equation. The first one is slope-intercept form. The second one is what we call general form. In general form, we arrange the terms to look like this. A and B cannot both be zero. If A was zero, as soon as we multiply by zero, that whole term is gone. The same thing would happen here, leaving us with one number equal to zero, which just can't happen. So we can't have A and B both be zero. We also need to make sure that A, B, and C are integers. So no fractions, no decimals. And A is going to be a positive whole number. Now you're going to notice A goes first and it's the one attached to the X term. B goes second, it's the one attached to the Y term, and C is our constant term with no variable. It's equal to zero, and this is the formal way of writing an equation. It's kind of like the one you dress up and take out on the town. It's the beautiful way of representing a linear equation. All right, so we have two equations, both in slope-intercept form. I recognize this is my slope, this is my y-intercept. Because A has to be positive and the terms have to be lined up in this order, I'm going to move everything over to the side that will make A positive. Right now I can see this is my X term and I have a negative A. So that needs to come over here, which means I'm also going to move my 6 over and set that equal to 0. Remember that the equal sign separates the left side of the equation from the right side of the equation. Every time we cross that equal sign, our sign of that term is flipping. Right now, when we started, the y was on the left. The y is still on the left of that equal sign, so the sign is not changing. The x term was on the right of the equal sign. Now we've moved it to the left. As soon as it crosses over, the sign changes. Same thing with the 6. As soon as it crosses over, the sign changes. Now we have a positive a term. We also have everything lined up in order. The next thing we have to do is get rid of that fraction. Right now I'm dividing by 3, so the opposite of that is multiply by 3. I'm going to do the same thing to every term to keep it balanced. And just a quick refresher here, the reason I'm multiplying by 3 is because when we multiply fractions, we're multiplying the numerators and we're multiplying the denominators. This has a denominator of 1. So I can see that I'm getting 6 thirds, which reduces to 2. An easier way if we're multiplying is just to divide out those factors, and then I can see it's leaving me with that 2 whole. So I have 2 x's. 3 times y gives me 3y, and 3 times negative 6 gives me that negative 18, and you have to remember to put equals 0. That's what makes it into this general form. So now here's what you need to check. Are all of your terms lined up in order? Do you have no fractions or decimals? And is a positive? And that is a beautiful equation. Let's take a look at this next one here. The first thing I'm going to do is line them up in order so A is positive. I can see that A is positive, so everything is coming over to the right-hand side. So I need to move over that Y, which will make my Y negative. Now you really have to watch the signs here. The only term that moved was that Y. My X was positive, stays positive. It didn't move. My constant term was negative, stays negative, it didn't move. The y crosses over, it went from a positive to a negative. So now we've got a positive x, everything's lined up. We need to get rid of this fraction. Right now we're dividing by 4, so I'm going to do the opposite, which is multiply by 4. So I'm going to multiply every term by 4, including this 0. It's still going to be 0, but we're keeping everything balanced. And then check. Are my terms lined up in order? Is A positive? Do we have it equal to zero? And do we have no fractions or decimals? If we do, we have a beautiful general equation. So we can see that this is a beautiful equation, but when slope-intercept form is so handy, it automatically gives us a slope and a y-intercept, why do we need general form? Well, there is a purpose in having this general form. So remember, an x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis, and y is always zero. We are neither above nor below the x-axis. Our y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. x is always zero. We're neither to the left or to the right of that zero point on the x-axis. If we're given an equation in general form, we can quickly identify the x and the y-intercepts, plot those two points, connect them, and we've graphed the line.
It's a quick way of graphing. Now you might not think it's quick because we're going through the whole process here, but I'm going to speed this up for you in a second. So we know an x-intercept occurs when y is zero. I'm going to substitute a zero in here. And as soon as I put a zero in, this term is gone. Zero times anything is zero. So we've got a zero here. We're going to move this six over. We're going to divide out the two. And I know I have an x-intercept at negative three, zero right there. Now, we're not going to be writing this out every time. I did it once to show you what's happening, but watch how fast this can go. Okay, so I know I have a y-intercept when x is zero. I know as soon as I put a zero in here, that term is gone. So in my mind, I've just canceled that out. I'm looking to isolate y. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to divide out my coefficient. So when this crosses the equal sign, it becomes negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. My y-intercept is at negative 2. I'm going to plot my x-intercept. I'm going to plot my y-intercept. I'm going to grab a ruler, connect the dots, put my arrows on the end, and there's the graph. All right, so we're given an equation in general form, and we have to graph it. We know general form, we're looking for those x and y intercepts. The x-intercept occurs when y is zero. So if we put a zero here, that whole term is gone. I need to keep the x, I'm looking for the x-intercept. So in my head, or you can even take your finger and cover it, that's gone. We move over the 20 to get positive 20, positive 20 divided by four, my x-intercept is five, I can plot that point. My y-intercept occurs when x is zero. We need to keep y in the equation, so we're gonna put a zero here. And again, you can take your finger and just cover that up, that's gone. I'm going to move this over so it becomes positive 20. I'm going to divide out negative 5, giving me a y-intercept of negative 4, which I can then plot. Don't forget to put your arrowheads on the end here when we do this. And then even if you need to, and in the beginning, we want to be accurate. So if we need to write things out, that's okay. But you can see how I've reduced the amount of writing compared to what I did on my first example. So write down the key points, know what term is going to zero out. And then from there, can we isolate the variable to get those intercepts? Okay, here we go again. We see an equation in general form, and we're trying to create the graph. We know we need those x and y intercepts. So I'm going to solve for x when y is zero. So cover that up with your finger, that's gone. We're gonna move this over, so the x-intercept is gonna be negative nine halves, or negative 4.5. I'm going to do the same thing now with y. I need to keep y. I'm looking for the y-intercept. Cover this up with your finger. That's going to be gone. It's going to equal 0. I'm going to move over negative 9 divided by negative 3. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is going to give me a positive value. You try that and see what you can get. And now that you've got the hang of the process, I want you to try the last one. I challenge you to try to do it mentally, just because we want that speed. We do want accuracy most importantly though. So if you need to write the steps out, please do so. But if you think you can try to do it mentally, see what you can get and let's try to plot those points. Did you remember your arrowheads and did you get the right coordinate points? We're using those x and y intercepts to graph an equation in general form, but there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind about those intercepts for all linear relations. So remember, the graph of a linear relation is going to produce a straight line. Most of the time, a linear relation is going to be a diagonal line, in which case there's two intercepts. We're going to cross the y-axis once, and we're going to cross the x-axis once. One intercept is the one that you want to be careful of. If I only cross the x or y axis once, it means I either have a vertical line or I have a horizontal line. I know that a horizontal line has a slope of zero. I know that a vertical line has a slope that's undefined. So I'm looking for where is this crossing the y axis and it just becomes y equals whatever that y intercept happens to be my B value if it's in slope intercept form. My vertical line is going to be where are we crossing that X axis? I can see that along this line, my X coordinate is going to be four the entire way. So my vertical line is the only one that doesn't start with that Y equals. It's the one that begins with X equals. So X equals, where does it cross the X axis? A diagonal line will always contain both an X and a Y in the equation. If there's only one intercept, we either have X equals, that tells you it's a vertical line, or we have Y equals, that tells you it's a horizontal line, if you only see that one variable. One variable in the equation, one intercept. One variable in the equation, 
one intercept. And finally, we can also have a linear graph that has an infinite number of intercepts. How is that graph going to look? I want you to think about that for a second. All right, so we're going to have infinite number of intercepts. If our graph is lying right on either the x or the y axis, remember that the equation for all vertical lines begin with x equals. We are crossing the x axis at zero. The equation for all horizontal lines begins with y equals. We are crossing the y axis at zero. All right, so far we've looked at two forms that we can write a linear equation in. We have slope intercept form, like y equals mx plus b. We have general form, that's the beautiful fancy form of the equation. To graph slope, slope intercept form, we're going to plot that y intercept and then use the slope to get to our next points. General form, we're going to look for the x and the y intercept, plot those points, and then we're going to connect with a straight line. These two equations represent two different lines. It's not the same line, by the way. In our next lesson, we're going to take a look at the third way that we can write a linear equation. So stay tuned to find out what that will be.